Just a reminder. We know that every breath that we take, we know that when we ingest food or imbibe liquid, there's a physical process that occurs. And so it is with perceptions, our sensory perceptions. And there is that saying that describes the process, refined process of what occurs. And that's that saying, take all perceptions from the sensual, the ascetic, and the transcendent levels of mind and bring them to the subtle level of body, speech, and mind. The body of appearances, the speech of vibrations, and the mind of awareness, where they flow down the columns at the side of the spine, meet and cancel one another out but rise up the central column of pure mind to emerge as our thoughts and our deeds. Perhaps you are experiencing now the phenomena that sometimes occurs from this process, and that is that sometimes, on occasion, we can be with someone and have the occurrence of the coming together of those facets of perception, the body language, the feelings, the empathy or oneness. And we're finding that, surprisingly, the response that comes out is totally out of context with what the perceptions were. And we can even say to ourselves, well, I wonder where that came from. What does this connote for us? What does it point to for us? But there's a story, and let's see if we can bring the two together, our experience, and what this story evokes for us. The story about, uh, well, that story about Raphael, um, he was born at a time when life was very difficult. There was famine and pestilence in the land, so life itself was a struggle, and Raphael barely was able to subsist. And he came to that time in his relative youth when he felt that this apathy, this hopelessness would continue unless he made a change in his life. So he decided that he would set out into the world to find, perhaps, a better way of being. Not even aiming for success, but wanting a better life. So Raphael set out, and he had many, many adventures along the way. And in those adventures, he learned a lot. He was able to, to not only learn new skills, but he began to be able to hone his perceptions, you might say, his awareness. And he managed to make a, a living so that he was able to save. And after some long while, he managed to acquire 600 pieces of silver, which he placed in small bags 
and kept on his body, sewing them into the hems of his garments and in his cloak. But then one day Raphael had the thought that it was time to return to his home place. So he set off on the path that would take him back to his village, keeping carefully his silver sequestered in his garments. But on the way, not far from where he had set out, he came across an old man sitting under a tree. And something drew him to the old man and giving the customary salutations. He sat down by the old man. The old man asked him where he was going and surprisingly Raphael said, I, I'm going home. Oh, said the old man, can I give you some advice for your travels? But it will cost you 200 pieces of silver. Without any thought or a question in his mind, Raphael took out from his robe one of his bags of silver and gave it to the old man. In response, the old man said, A boulder is not safe. So Raphael took his leave, scratching his head, wondering what the meaning of this phrase was. But as it happened, when he stopped at a little wayside in, he met up with some other travelers who were going his way, and they set off together. But after some time, when the day was getting long, they came to a place on the road where there was a little inn and everyone said, let's stay here at this inn for the night. But it was noticed that behind this inn, there was a great boulder. And Raphael remembered the words of the old man. A boulder is not safe. So he mentioned this to all his companions, and they said, oh, that's ridiculous, that boulder's been there for a thousand years, it's not going to move. So a number of them went into the inn to settle for the night, but Raphael and several of the others decided that they would not do so. They camped outside, and in the night there was a great rumbling sound. The boulder came loose and flattened the inn with those who had chosen to stay there. Raphael and his several companions moved on and again along the way Raphael came across an old man, this time in the coffee shop in which they stopped to have their coffee. And he was drawn somehow to this being. And after again salutations, they got into conversation very similar to the earlier one. The old man said, uh, can I give you uh, some words of wisdom? 
it will cost you 200 silver pieces. And again, Raphael, without question, or barely a thought, he took out from his robe another bag of his silver <coughs> and gave it to the old man. He said, a bridge is safe. So Raphael with his companions went on their travels again. But after some time, they came to a rope bridge over a great canyon. His companions looked at the bridge, not daring to cross. It was so precarious. But as Raphael was standing with his companions, he remembered the words of the old man. A bridge is safe. So, mm -hmm. with great confidence, he walked across the bridge, leaving his fearful companions as he reached the other side and looking back to gesture to them to come. He saw that a group of bandits had come and beset them and were dragging them away with all of their <coughs> belongings. Raphael sadly went on his Way. Again, along the road, he came to another old hermit sitting by the side of the road. Perhaps he was smoking a hubble bubble pipe. But again, Raphael sat with him, the old man again. Can I give you some advice? But it will cost you two hundred pieces of silver. Again, without a thought, Raphael agreed, and the old man said, climb a tree. Now, taking his leave, Raphael again scratched his head. What could it mean? But now, penniless, all of his life's savings, all of that work, all of that toil gone. He was returning home penniless. But in due time he arrived back at the edge of his village. But to his great horror he saw that a pride of lions had attacked the people of that place, were mauling them and dragging them away. Now Raphael and all of those in that village knew that lions could not climb trees. But there was and had been a belief for so many years that trees were sacred and no one ever had been allowed to climb a tree. But Raphael remembered the words of the old hermit, climb a tree. 
So this is what he did. <coughs> he had to watch as his village was ravaged. But when all was quiet and the carnage had completed, Raphael looked around to find in the branches of that tree three containers. And when he looked, each of those containers had two hundred pieces of gold. Raphael came down from that tree with those containers <coughs> and when all had settled, he went to the village center to the goldsmith's shop to exchange his gold. When he entered the shop, there the goldsmith stood with an enigmatic smile on his face. And when Raphael looked with great astonishment, he saw that this goldsmith was none other than the old man he had met on the road. How does this saying <coughs> encapsulating the refined process of our moment-to-moment -moment experiences of taking in perceptions, bringing them to the level of mind where all meets the level that transcends the dimensions. He comes to that place after traversing the columns that have been purified, <coughs> cleansed by life experiences so that unimpeded our perceptions pass down the columns to meet at the base of the spine, cancel each other out, but rise up as a force that emerges as our thoughts and our deeds. How does this moment-by-moment moment process correlate to the story? As they meet for us, what emerges? for you right now. As this little piece of science and story meet. Cancel one another out, but bring forth an awareness a thought, a realization. What is that thought for you? <coughs> for 
for me is that very often you see a problem and it's how it's over with your head and you, you think and think about it and it doesn't work. And, and then when you're totally not thinking about it and just uh, going within yourself, suddenly the answer comes. And when the answer comes, often it seems very silly and strange and weird. And you think, no, oh, this, is, this will never be any good. So you have to have a little faith to do it and not to question it. <clears throat> so what is it that happens at this meeting you could face it is fine. Like our breath. We take in our breath and in between there's a space, a, a, an emptiness before the out breath. Have you yet recognized that when we take in perceptions and they meet, there is that moment before the response comes, and that moment is a moment of emptiness, space, timelessness. What is it that happens between the meeting that you have with a being and their telling their story or relating whatever it is, and before our response. Have you ever noticed that there's a space? A space? Could it be that it's that moment where at the base of the spine this happens and just a force is created. And that force comes out and you think, where did that come from? Mm. What was that? It seems totally out of tune you know, with what I was taking in. But there's no question about it because we can see the outcome of it. Aren't we? In that person. Mm.